Welcome to Abergavenny Baptist Church. Life, faith, together. Okay, well, my granddad had a Christmas present 119 years ago, and I've still got it, which is amazing. And this is it. Any idea what this might be? Oh, somebody knows. It was a gift for soldiers. Yeah, he was a medic, but he was in the First World War in the trenches. And it was a gift from a king. It was a gift that was basically had the, the, the love from the king. What do you think might have been inside this box? Oh, next slide. There we go. Any idea? Chocolates? Well, actually, if you were a nurse, uh, it was chocolates. If you were an Asian soldier, apparently it was sugar and spice. Uh, so I'm told. And if you were an ordinary British soldier, it was exactly... Uh, where is it? Here we go. It was exactly one ounce of tobacco, 20 cigarettes, and uh, if you weren't a smoker, you had a pencil, kind of bullet-type pencil as well with some sweets. But also inside this, this uh, lovely little tin that came to the soldiers in the First World War, there was a card. And the card was from the king. Well, kind of the king. It said, with best wishes for a happy Christmas and a victorious New Year, from the Princess Mary and friends at home. Wow. And inside there, there was a picture of Princess Mary, which I've still got. Princess Mary, going back 119 years. I wonder what people thought when they, they received something like this in the trenches. They may have felt surprised. They may have felt a sense of hope. They may have been very, very thankful for this present, and uh, especially for the words that were read inside there. See, in the middle of the tin is a kind of a picture of a sort of the Queen, or the, sorry, the, it was actually the, the Queen Mary above, which said on there, and it said on the top there, the words Imperium Britannica, the British Empire. Wow. It's just going back that long. Maybe the troops got a sense of feeling, a sense of belonging, going to being part of something much bigger than themselves. Maybe they were encouraged that Britain wasn't alone, but they had others around them to help them. And maybe they had allies. Well, who were the allies in the First World War, I ask you? Any thoughts? Well, the, 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 I was surprised when I saw the list of the Allies here on the, on, engraved on the tin. And they were Belgium, France, Serbia, and then on the other side it says Japan, Russia, Montenegro, and this must have helped them to remind them who were, yep, Any um, Americans? They joined towards the end, maybe, but they weren't actually on the tin. So, you know, I don't think they were actually there at the time in 1914. They often came a little bit late to the war. But, yeah, so there was all these kind of things inside the tin. But I wonder what they made of the image. What they made of the image. Can I have the next slide? Yeah. I mean... Here was an image of princess, the princess, and uh, yeah, I must have wondered what this was about. She looks very beautiful. Perhaps it reminded them of, of somebody that, that cared, somebody that loved them. Perhaps it was quite an attractive image that they put there in the box. 
And it got me thinking, what would a picture of God look like? What might a picture of God look like if they were to get a Christmas tin uh, of, from God saying, this is a Christmas present from God? What do you think might be in the tin? Yeah? Well, you've already given the clue away. It's always the uh, same answer every Christmas. Yeah, baby Jesus. I managed to get a little tiny, tiny baby Jesus here that's in the tin. And uh, the Bible says in Colossians 1.15 that Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. That he existed before anything else was created. That he is supreme over all creation. And yet here he is wrapped in poor clothes, lying in an animal trough, not the kind of king to bring hope for a happy Christmas and a victorious New Year. So there must be something else about this baby. And I think it must have thought, they must have thought a little bit more about what this baby had come to bring. And I think one of the things, apart from his love, was peace. Peace. I mean, people were saying that the Great War, that was the First World War, was going to be over by Christmas. But sadly, human beings are not very good at making peace with each other. They did actually on Christmas Day, 1914, as we were reminded at the peace service by Andrew, where they sang Silent Night. And uh, for a moment, there was a kind of a ceasefire. And they m were able to kind of kick a football around and be be good friends with each other and the Germans and the, and, the, and the British were, you know, for a moment, celebrating peace at Christmas. But sadly, human beings are not very good at making peace with each other. And I think that's really because they don't know how to make peace with God. Sadly, this is the picture that you will see on your TVs this Christmas. Christmas in Bethlehem. They're not going to have any real celebrations in Bethlehem this year because of the war between the Gaza and Israel. But So they've put in the, the manger, they've put it all surrounded by barbed wire, which saddens me, really saddens me, that here is an image of a baby that was born to bring peace. Peace with God, peace with each other, and yet they're not able to bring that peace. And so the last thing that's in the box, I mean, I put this one in there, but it sort of reminded me that why this baby came. And it's the only way to bring peace with God. Some of us think, well, I'm okay. I, I, I kind of occasionally pray to God. But, you know, if you don't really pray to God and, and speak to him, you may not have peace inside of your very inner being. And it's actually that the baby was born to die on a cross. Just think of that. So right from Christmas, first century, lying in a manger, that baby was born to die. And so would bring peace. So as I sort of kind of close with the, with the image, you know, let's have a prayer. So Father God, we, we thank you indeed that through faith in Christ, we can have peace with God the Father. We thank you that it's because he died and bore our sins on the cross that we are able to know you and able to find that, that acceptance and peace that's within. Help us, Lord, as human beings to really live out the peace that was won at Calvary, that was won from Bethlehem, that was able to bring human beings into a lifelong, eternal relationship with you. Help us, Lord, to be peacemakers in your world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website, abgavenibaptist.co.uk.